Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.15 and Eagle Dynamics AH64D Apache module. Welcome to tutorial 11, Radar Hellfires. Today we're going to learn how to utilize the AGM-114L Radar Hellfire in the Apache. This is very, very similar to the Kilo model, the, the laser-guided version. The main difference, of course, being that it has a uh, active radar seeker in the nose as opposed to a laser seeker. And uh, these missiles are capable of being fired in lock-on before launch and lock-on after launch uh, modes. They can also be fired against targets detected by your FCR, which is the most common way, uh, by your TADs, uh, or even by data link handover. Uh, we're going to be covering the TADs in a different video because I want to go over the, the TADs linked mode and the way it can work with the FCR. We'll also be covering the data link in a different video as well. So today we're just covering the FCR. Uh, this will all be done from the front seat, uh, but note that everything that I do today, it's also possible to do from the pilot seat. Uh, it's perfectly possible for the pilot to fire the Hellfires. So let's go ahead and hide our CPG's body just now, so we're not getting in the way of everything. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what we need to do to get set up, and what uh, buttons we use on the left and right grips uh, in order to be able to do everything we're going to do today. Uh, so yeah, main things being of course on the right hand grip, uh, we can choose our sensor of interest. Today we're going to be pushing to the left on the sensor select to get FCR. Uh, we then have the FCR. Oh, let's let's actually. I almost forgot to turn off that uh, auto search thing. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to want to be able to use the fields of view on the the radar, and that's also on the right hand grip. Uh, you've got manual track on the right hand gri uh, grip as well. And if we move to the left hand grip, uh, we've got the the radar modes. We're just going to be using GTM today, but GTM or RMAP will work for air to ground engagements. ATM, of course, would work for air-to-air -air engagements. Uh, cursor controller is also on the left here. We have our weapon selection here. Uh, we're going to be pushing what's called WASing, uh, the, the weapon... Um, actually, I don't even remember what that stands for. But uh, weapon action switch, there you go. So we're going to WAS to the right to get missile. That's how you choose your Hellfires. And uh, we've got our scan switch as well, pushing away for a single, pulling towards for continuous. Uh, that should be pretty much all the controls we're going to use today. Uh, and I have these mapped up on my Xbox controller as usual. Uh, See, so yeah, I've got my, my uh, weapons action switch here. Uh, I've got my FCR scan size here. Uh, I've got uh, sight select here. I've got... Uh, we're not going to be using the laser trigger today. We're going to use the weapon trigger, though. On the left-hand hand grip, we have the weapons trigger switch, and you need to go to second detent to fire that. Uh, I've got my uh, scan switch on the left-hand grip, again, continuous and single. And uh, apart from that, I think, yeah, you get the radar modes. We're not going to mess with that too much today. And we've got update store. So let's, uh, let's go through the absolute basics of employing the weapon. I'm going to leave the weapon format on the left-hand side, and I'm actually going to use... Uh, the TEDAC today to display my FCR. So in the first instance, I'm going to hit FCR on the TEDAC, and I now have the FCR up. As I said, I'm going to leave weapons on the left. On the right, I'm going to leave my um, my TSD on screen, but I'm going to put it into attack phase. I'm going to bump the range down to 10, because that will more closely match uh, what the FCR is doing. We're now going to push sensor select switch to the left to select FCR as our, our currently selected sensor. You'll see that brings up a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of additional controls on here, and you can see CPG, FCR, and unknown range. Uh, we're now going to go master arm to armed, and we're going to pull the uh, pull the scan switch for a single scan. And at this stage, we're going to see that we've got a bunch of wheeled vehicles. And automatically, based on prioritization scheme A, uh, we've got our next to shoot, which is the dashed diamond, and the alternate next to shoot here in the triangle. At this stage, uh, if I was to WAS missiles and pull the trigger, we would immediately engage this target here. Nice and simple. So uh, let's, uh, let's actually center up the view a little bit. And let's go ahead and WAS right. I've now got missiles, 
and uh, you're going to see that we have lock on after launch normal. So let's go ahead and pause for just a moment here and talk on talk about a uh, lock on after launch and lock on before launch. Uh, you'll see this target is at a range of 3.1 kilometers. Uh, if if we have a target bef uh, less than one kilometer away, lock on before launch is the only option. The, the missile would not have time to acquire the target with its own radar after launch at less than a kilometer. If the target is between one and two five, uh, sorry, between one and two point five kilometers, uh, lock on after launch is allowable. That that would then work. Uh, if the target is moving, you will always require lock on before launch. There is no option to do a lock on after launch on a moving target. So uh, you've got the the box. Uh, small box means that we're in lock on after launch mode, and that's actually confirmed with the text here, lock on after launch normal. If it's a dashed box, we're not within parameters, and that usually is going to mean that you need to turn the helicopter. Um, if it's a big box, that means we're in lock on before launch. This is preferable in most cases. And if you have a big box dashed, it means we're lock on before launch, but we're in invalid parameters. Something else to talk about is the statuses of our missiles here on the weapon format page. The next missile to be fired, you'll see here, is um, hollow and flashing. And it has an R, which means it's ready. If it says S, it's in standby. If it's showing OT, that means it's currently over-temping. <laughs> um, and yeah, hollow and R means it's the next missile. Hollow and T means it's the next missile and it's currently tracking, which in most cases is what you want. Um, you have options for the missile power status here. You can power off all of your missiles, in which case you can't fire them. Automatic will power them on in banks. Um, it has a logic around those, but you know, like you can see here, I've got eight missiles uh, loaded, it powers on four of them first. These front ones, or actually I guess this would be the upper ones, uh, are currently powered. This set are not currently powered. I could but, uh, pop that to all and it will actually, you'll see these, these bottom ones are now in standby. After a short delay, they'll align and go into ready. Um, if you're intending to do like a full salvo, like this system is perfectly capable of launching all of the radar hellfires in a single pass. Uh, if the FCR has picked up enough targets, then you're going to want this to be an all. In most cases, auto is going to be fine if you're going to be kind of firing a couple, taking a break, firing a couple, taking a break. Uh, so you're usually going to have that in auto. You can inhibit lock on before launch and force the missiles to lock on after launch. Um, I don't know why you would do this. You're normally going to, like, lobal is, is going to be kind of a preference, if at all possible. There's also second target inhibit. This, at the current time, is not implemented, so it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and then, yeah, it confirms up here type. RF means the radar. Mode means uh, you can actually put it into manual, in which case you manually have to power on the missiles and manage them. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, generally, you're going to have it normal. Normal is quite good because it's going to try and maintain the aircraft's center of gravity. If you have it in the manual mode, you could kind of fire all the missiles on one pylon and unbalance yourself. Um, again, no idea why you would do this. And if you dewaz the missile, so if I, if I push... Uh, was to the right again, I deselect the missiles and I uh, and I undo the target handover that I previously had. Okay, let's go ahead and do another radar scan just now. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, scan is complete. Going to was to the right and I've got lock on after launch normal. Uh, and yeah, if I, if I had the FCR on the, on the left here, I could cycle the next to shoot. Let's bring up this. Let's actually cycle the next to shoot. Let's also lock on after launch. Lock on after launch. Lobal. Here we go. Lock on before launch. Because that's the only option with a with a moving vehicle. Let's actually put my um, put my radar on a continuous sweep here just now. Yeah. RF missile track. So this confirms that we have a lock on lock on before launch, but we currently have seeker limit. Oh, actually, it, the vehicle actually helpfully drove into our field of view. So let's go ahead and pull the trigger. Missile launch, and the missile's away. You see we get the cross on the display. If I F6, we can follow the missile inbound. At this point, the missile is completely autonomous. Uh, it is... Uh, oh no, that's a civilian vehicle. <laughs> Okay, um, so yeah, in this case, this was lock-on before launch. The Seeker saw the target, 
before we launched and um, it tracked it the whole way in. We're now in lock on after launch. Let's demonstrate this one. I'm going to pull the trigger. We've got missile launch indicated and away we go. We get a time of flight indicated here. And if I hit F6, the seeker could not see the target. So basically the target was too far away. Uh, so we did a target position handover to the missile. The missile is going to fly to the area where we saw the target and then turn on its radar. You can see it turning. It saw that target. Boom. And away we go. Now, lock-on after launch does come with a little bit of risk uh, in that, of course, the missile might not pick up the target or it might pick up the wrong target. You know, if the vehicle that we originally targeted drives away and another vehicle drives into the same vicinity, it's entirely possible the missile might pick that up instead. Here we are, we're on lock on after launch normal again. Let's pull the trigger, missile launch, and it's away. I'm going to stay inside the cockpit this time so you can see. The next missile to shoot tracked for a short period and then lost it. Uh, that's interesting, line of sight invalid. So I guess the, the next target is kind of coming into and out of our line of sight here. Three, two, one. There we go. Okay, so that target should now have been destroyed. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, launch the next one. And you'll see that it's now powering on the next set of missiles one by one as well, because we're in the automatic mode. Let's see what hits we're getting here. These are quite close, and these are moving targets. Again, civilian targets. You've got to really watch out for that. <laughs> uh, that's another strike there. And if we look at, take a little peek at the TSD, as before... The symbology from the FCR is overlaid on here, and the shot uh, markers are also showing up on here as well. So we can we can be fairly sure about what targets we've already hit. I'm just going to put the FCR out of continuous. It should do its last scan for me. Hmm, actually, nope, it's still doing continuous. There we go, managed to get it to stop. Uh, okay, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the entire thing. I'm going to WAS right to deselect the missiles, uh, and I'm going to select... Um, helmet mounted display is my site for just now and go uh, weapon safe so yeah very very basics uh, you know the the kind of step by step to get yourself up and going you need to be armed uh, you need to select the FCR for this type of employment do a scan and get your targets up confirm your next to shoot and alternate next to shoot icons if you're happy with those go ahead and waz to the right to get the missiles flashing missile and an R. You're either going to have lock on after launch or lock on before launch and then you can go ahead and pull the trigger as long as you're within constraints. If you have a small box not dashed you're in lock on after launch. If you have a larger box not dashed you're in lock on before launch. If you have a dashed box you are not within parameters and you'll probably have some kind of a message about that. Let's actually tell uh, let's tell George to turn off target a bit and bring up my interface and tell him to pull the helicopter off target a bit. The box will show you where you need to go. There you go, yaw limit. So yeah, we're, we're outside of uh, parameters. I can pull the trigger and I can fire the missile anyway uh, and it's going to turn towards the target in its lock-on after launch mode. So you don't have to be within parameters, uh, but if you're not within parameters, the missile is... Uh, going to be forced to lock on after launch and, and you have all the same problems with, with that in that uh, you might not hit the target you intend. Okay, hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe and I'll see you all next time.